Okay, so there we go. First of all, thank you, uh, Roshan and all the all the team for this invitation. You know that uh, I'm really always really happy to help you with anything you you need, and also I'm really feel really honored to to be to be called by people like you, uh, which are all also really expert uh, in India in, in your um, in your different uh, position there. So thank you so much again for the invitation. I remember I was with you in person, uh, I think four or five years ago, in that exciting, exciting uh, meeting you, you uh, yearly uh, have there in Mumbai. Uh, it was really, really exciting with so many attendees, around 1,000 attendees. It was a really great experience with many surgeries, very well organized. So congratulations for that. And I see that also you can organize uh, beautiful uh, webinars in the new era we are, we are living now. Okay, you know these are my disclosures, and of course we all are uh, fighting against uh, this uh, de demon, the, the coronavirus, which has made that the beautiful pictures or overcrowded pictures of Barcelona became uh, pictures and images like, like these empty cities, uh, which was uh, absolutely uh, un uh, unthinkable uh, two months uh, ago. Also, this, uh, this street. Uh, Yalaitana, this is Plaza Catalunya, which uh, everyone who has been in Barcelona before knows that is one of the uh, most overcrowded places, in, at least in Spain and in Europe. And this, you can see this. Uh, the people have been very, very uh, uh, conscious uh, about this and respect the, the lockdown. But sometimes you can find some crazy guy or girl in the middle of the street, you know, uh, not respecting the rules, but in general, everyone respected it. So going really to the uh, topic we had to talk uh, about uh, multiligament issues. Multiligament uh, is the denomination of uh, when at least two of, uh, uh, of the four uh, uh, major ligaments of the knee are injured. And so if you cannot have two, three or four of the uh, uh, injuries, we cannot talk about multiligament as uh, a uh, unique uh, uh, it, it, um, entity because there are so many different uh, combinations that uh, speaking uh, about all of them uh, is uh, uh, endless and also speaking for all of them as a un, uh, un, as a one entity is also uh, two uh, it's, a, it's an oversimplification that it doesn't lead us to any uh, uh, clear idea after this so of course we can have uh, in this combination the ACA can be torn uh, which when we have the ACL plus one of the collateral ligaments injured is a knee dislocation uh, one. Uh, the same thing is you have a PCL in combination with the MCL of the, of the medial side or lateral side, it's still a KD1. Um, as I said before, it could be the medial or the lateral side, but this is always a KD1. When one of the, one of the cruciate, only one of the cruciate is uh, going with a medial or lateral side injury too. When we have both the cruciate ligaments, the ACL and the PCL, it is called as KD2. The KD2 is only the cruciate ligaments. So you cannot have something in the medial lateral side and still calling KD2. When you have a, 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 a associated concomitantly to the cruciate ligaments, the MCL or the medial side, to speak more correctly. In this case, it's a KD3, because we have three ligaments, M for the medial side, to distinguish when we have the combination of both cruciate with the lateral side, which obviously it will be the KD3O. It's easy to conclude that if we have the four ligament insured, it will be the KD4, very easy to remember. And also there is a number five, which is much more serious when we have some uh, multiligament injuries of the knee associated with some fractures, which uh, became this knee even much more unstable. This is called KD5. We are not going to talk about KD5, but uh, mainly to the other uh, denominators. So what's the, the mechanism of injury? Of course, as you can see in the right side, you can have this in obese patients, in fat patients, with a simple fall that can provoke, can, can lead to a 
a multi-ligament, usually KD2 injury, but also KD3. But of course, this, this is not the most common where, uh, mechanism of injury that we see in our office. By far, the most common is a high energy trauma that can lead to severe injuries, not only in the knee we are dealing with, but also uh, to, the, uh, to other parts of the, of the body. So the first approach is not for us. So as we can see here in, the, in, this, uh, in this circle, knee later, doc. So we are surgeons. Uh, there is a fracture, we need to fix it, as uh, everyone say, but of course, the first approach is not uh, done by us. It has to be done by the emergency trauma uh, team, which has to follow the ATLS protocol. So the A, B, C, D, E. In fact, they had to do it twice, not only one, but twice, uh, until we go there and we explore the extremities. And when we, the time, our time comes in the emergency, in the urgent uh, moments of the, of the uh, knee uh, dislocation, we have to be aware that up to one every five uh, knee dislocations goes with a vascular injury. So this has to be not only examined and uh, explored, but also uh, suspect. If we don't suspect this, we can, in many cases, uh, uh, don't really uh, diagnose this severe condition that can lead, of course, to devastating consequences. Not only by uh, exploring or assessing the, the, pedal, the, the pedal pulse, because it has been shown that in many cases we can have uh, absent poles uh, with uh, uh, intact uh, um, obliterated artery without injury and the other way. We can still have some poles, but uh, there is some degree of injury to the, to the, to the, to, to the arteries, to the knee arteries, in this case the popliteal artery. Also it can be injured the, tibia, the posterior tibia. Um, it used to be uh, normal to perform arteriography to everyone who has uh, a knee dislocation. So arteriography to a 100% of the cases. But the problem with this, that if we perform arteriography uh, to everyone uh, who has a knee dislocation, we can see in this examination that up to two thirds, 64% of the cases will show some uh, intimal tears like, like we are here, uh, like we are seeing here. And this doesn't mean that you really need to repair them or you, you, you need to do a vascular surgery. So, uh, because most of them, of these cases will not progress to a complete uh, injury. So we don't have to treat uh, arteriography uh, examination, but uh, as usually in the knee also, in, in uh, knee exploration, in a physical examination, it is more important the exploration and then to realize which of these cases will need some vascular um, surgery. So this is old fashioned, so to perform arteriography to everyone and now it's more to observe to, and to perform selective arteriography. And how do, you, do we perform selective arteriography? With something very simple that it can be done with in any hospital, uh, which is called the ankle brachial pressure index. And this uh, ABPI uh, has shown that when it is um, lower than 0 0.9, it has a sensitivity, a specificity, a specificity, and positive predictive value of 100%. There's not many tests in, the, in, the, in medicine that can say something like this. So this is the very good index to do in all the cases and which, uh, of course, if you are seeing that there is no pulse, there is a, there is a uh, you know, a, a, a blue distal uh, uh, lower limb, of course, you don't need to do this, it's obvious, but this is the case with, where the physical examination and the clinical expression, it, not, it's, it, it is not so obvious. So, saying in other words, when this the BPI, uh, uh, break it, uh, uh, ankle brachial pressure index is above or uh, higher than 0 0.9, we can be sure because the negative predictive value is 100%. We can be sure that there is no vascular injury, at least if we are doing this repeatedly 
every four to six hours for the for the first two days. So if all this uh, uh, examination is negative for the first four to six hours for two days, we can be sure that there is no need to do any uh, vascular surgery. On the other side, if we observe that we have below uh, uh, 0 0.9, we here should perform any kind of selective um, arteriography, any kind, standard arteriography, CAT scan arteriography, uh, magnetic resonance uh, arteriography, uh, ultrason Doppler ultrasonography, uh, anything of this, okay? And it comes to uh, our position as an uh, orthopedic surgeon, the needs or not of using external fixator. We have recently performed a um, literature review uh, regarding the needs, re the real needs of external fixator when there is a vascular injury. And most of the studies has uh, been done around 20 or 30 years ago, so it's nothing new. So in these studies, in these old studies, they recommend that always you have a vascular injury, you fix, you stabilize the knee with external fixation to prevent or to protect the, uh, the revascularization uh, procedure. But uh, we also have been uh, asking some uh, uh, vascular surgeon now, and they say that it's not mandatory, but perhaps it's uh, recommendable to perform this. And how to place the external fixation in order not to uh, bother or not to uh, disturb the area of uh, um, of, uh, of uh, delayed reco uh, ligament reconstruction by performing the pins by placing the pins at least 10 centimeters proximal and distal from the joint line. In that way, we won't have any any pin in the area of uh, uh, ligament reconstruction surgery, which in that case, it will increase the risk of uh, infection if we are having this, this pin too close to the joint line. There is not only an indication of external fixation for uh, vascular injuries, but also uh, we can use it in a, in a, in a, in a in KD5 uh, with when we have a multiligament with a fracture because of the high instability. It's very difficult to contain this uh, kind of injury is only with, a, with an splint. Uh, also in open, uh, in open dislocations. And uh, in those cases that we cannot contain the, uh, the knee with a standard splint because of the high instability. When we have not only the ligament, but also all the capsular bulls, in those cases that the uh, leg is moving or even in, in bigger patient or obese patient, when it is very difficult, because of the fat tissue to contain or to keep uh, this construction relatively stable. Switching to the neural problems, uh, these nerve uh, uh, um, injuries in around 40% uh, of the cases, mainly this is related to the uh, injuries to the lateral side of the knee, which is much more frequent to have uh, nerve uh, problems than in the medial or the central pivot. So, this is by far the most commonly insured nerve, the periodontal nerve. When we, of, when we observe a complete palsy of the perineal nerve, we can expect a recovery of around 40% of the cases, which is much better, around 90% of uh, recovery when we, have all, we observe only a partial palsy in, uh, at the beginning of the, of, the, uh, of the evaluation, of the assessment. There, what happens when we have something, uh, some uh, non-recovery, when the, this pulse is not recovered? What we can do about that? Grafting has been shown very poor results in, uh, uh, in the area of uh, knee dislocation. It's not the same with other conditions, but in knee dislocation, the grafting has, 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 provide, has shown to provide very poor uh, outcomes. It happened the same with nerve transfers, so both of these uh, uh, um, Techniques are not really indicated. Of course, it can be done, but it, uh, you can expect very poor results. And then the question is, when you are observing a partial palsy and not even a complete palsy at the beginning, what, would, what, would, what do we do if we could do, if you had to do a surgery? Uh, neurolysis or observation? Regarding neurolysis, of course, if you had to do some surgery on the lateral aspect, because of the surgical technique itself, you already have to identify 
I'm, 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 I'm performing neurolysis. But it's not that a neurolysis has shown to provide uh, a better uh, result or outcomes uh, comparing to observation. So currently, unless you had to do it because of the surgery, it's not an indication. If you have a patient with a, this uh, partial uh, um, palsy, that you have, for example, you have to reconstruct the other ligaments and you don't have to, to go lateral, you don't really need to go for the, for the peroneal nerve because the uh, uh, recovery after neurolysis and observation, it is the same. Also, in, uh, in this location, you have, uh, in half of the cases, chondral injuries, and in half of the cases, meniscal injuries uh, that had, has to be uh, assessed and, of course, treated accordingly. And uh, what is more important from our point of view at the emergency department after two, after, after, uh, two A, B, C, D, E uh, protocol has been, uh, has been done is, of course, the uh, uh, stability evaluation, all the different tests we all know. I'm not going to talk about this, there are many. But we have to test uh, grossly, at, at least during the first uh, assessment, which of the uh, instability are uh, more evident. Of course, you perform uh, different uh, uh, radiography uh, techniques, X-ray, CAT scan, and for sure, you will need an MRI. It's not that urgent, the MRI. You can do it at, this, at the first time with a CAT scan to rule out any important injury or fractures, but of course, you will need an MRI do it uh, as soon as possible, relatively. And perhaps the most important stuff I want to talk about during my, this presentation is timing. Timing, timing, and timing. Uh, regardless, many papers and about multiligament and timing, most of them are uh, level four and level five evidence. So uh, these are most, in most of the cases, just recommendation. There's no much uh, consensus, perhaps because each multiligament injury is so unique, so di different to each other that are very difficult to make a common uh, message for all of them. So at the end, we had to group them somehow uh, in order to see how to uh, proceed with the timing which is the first thing we, thi we, we think about when we have the patient in front of us after an acute injury. We say, well, when do we have to operate them? There are a few things that you have to, that, that can, cannot wait, very, very few. Uh, in most of the cases, the, 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 the patient can be uh, deeply studied and you can plan accordingly with no uh, hurry. But in some cases, there is an emergency, and this, of course, we already said that the vascular injury, also we, when we have a compartment syndrome, as we are observing the right uh, lower limb here. Also in open dislocation, of course, you cannot leave the open dislocation uh, open. And also in cases when, we, when you have fractures, when you have a fracture, you have the fracture, you, you need to fix it. It's not an emergency, but you have to fix the fracture. You cannot uh, delay or, or, or schedule your surgery one or two months later, for sure. Uh, regarding this emergency, the other thing is really how to plan and uh, the, the challenge of uh, planning and uh, program everything and what we, can, we have to do, when to do that, if we have to do it in one time, in, in two times. So this can be the difference between the happiness or the sadness of, the, of your results because it has been shown a strong correlation between timing and outcomes. In general, if we, need, if we see something to repair, we will talk about this a little bit later, uh, if, you need, if you want to repair something, of course, after two or three weeks, uh, the tissue quality will be so poor that uh, it would be not amenable to repair. So if you are planning and uh, expecting to repair something, you have to do it fast. The, during the first week, the first 10 to 7 to 10 days, you have to perform the repair. And if, if you have to plan, if you are planning to reconstruct, in this case, it has been shown that around three or four weeks is the more appropriate. 
again, going to the literature has been shown that three weeks, if you are doing, uh, you have nothing to repair, you are doing just one stage and, uh, and you have to reconstruct, it's better around three weeks than later than six weeks. It has that cons that uh, it has been shown that uh, in acute, you mean around three weeks, you have more uh, atrofibrosis, more, uh, more ratio motion problems, so it could, uh, that, uh, it could need some um, arthrolysis. But other than that, uh, uh, doing the surgery around three weeks has shown that provides a more stronger, a more stable construction comparing to uh, much later uh, surgery. And also the outcomes has been shown to be uh, significantly better than that. And if we compare the three scenarios, acute, stage, and delayed, we observe first, forget about the stage, I'm going to talk about acute and delayed. This is about three weeks and six, eight weeks. So in acute, has been shown to uh, provide much uh, better outcomes than the, when you are delaying this six or eight weeks, as we are saying here. And, but in those cases that needs to be staged, as we are going to see a little bit later, uh, the outcomes have, have been shown to provide even much better uh, uh, um, uh, results than comparing not only to delay, but also to acute. And when do we stage? We stage it when we observe something like the, uh, well, we observe that the collateral ligaments and capsule, uh, even uh, muscle attachment, tendon attachments, are abused. So in, in these cases, uh, it's not recommendable to uh, wait for three or four weeks to perform the surgery to reconstruct everything because you, perform, you perhaps are missing some opportunity to repair. There's nothing better than repair, of course, because we are uh, preserving the, the structure. The, then we, ca we can discuss about each specific indication, for example, for the um, posterior corner, Reconstruction uh, uh, repair has shown not to be as much as effective as a reconstruction, but that's very uh, that's the, the exception. So when when you have, for example, both cruciate ligament and all the lateral capsule and all the posterior compartment and perhaps the biceps uh, tendon abuse from the fibular head, in those cases it is recommendable to perform acute repair of the lateral compartment to repair the capsule as much as we can and stage the second procedure. And also, doing this, you prevent the fluid extravasation, uh, the, the leaking, the, the, the fluid leaking during the arthroscopy if you are performing uh, an arthroscopy surgery uh, with all the lateral compart all the lateral attachments, lateral amial attachments and uh, structures uh, abused. So at the end, it's not a matter of uh, how fast we are if we perform this in one or two cases. In case of doubt, it's better to do it in, in two times because this is not a race at the end. It is important if uh, you reach uh, the end, the final, the, the, the final, uh, it's, not a, it's not a race against somebody else. It depends not only in the indication, but also it depends on, in the skills. So this is not a matter of, uh, you know, being how, uh, how much, how, how skilled I am. The need is location study group. With again, this is number five, uh, level five uh, evidence. So this is everything we have. So level five evidence has uh, recommend, and this is something that uh, I have uh, done also mine because it's my approach. And when we have uh, any cruciate ligament injury, let's say both cruciate ligament injured with concomitant uh, grade one or two medial or lateral, in this case, we can perform a reconstruction in one stage around three or four weeks. In the cases that we have uh, a more severe with grade three medial or lateral, and not only the ligaments, but also, for example, in this case, this is not only a problem of ligament, this is a problem of the capsule, the biceps, everything is absolutely torn in this, in this situation. So if we miss the opportunity to repair, to reattach all this lateral capsule uh, to its place, we will miss a very good uh, opportunity to restore the stability as much uh, as possible. So in, those, in these cases, we recommend, I recommend, uh, the knee dislocation study group recommend to do it in, in two, time, in, in two uh, stages. How to do this? First, as I, I had commented it before, 
uh, around the first week, you can do the repair of the lateral and medial side, to all the capsule, to put it with 10 anchors if you need, if you need to do so. Uh, you will see in the next presentation that Dr. Leyer will show you very nice cases of repair. Uh, and once you do this, you cannot operate on this patient again two weeks later. You have to wait to restore full range of motion and to heal everything you have, uh, you have repaired. And uh, around, six, around six to eight weeks after the first surgery, you can proceed with the second stage, which will be reconstruction of the ACL and PCL perhaps. So my uh, take home message uh, is that uh, as simple as this, uh, of course, we have to be aware of always of any kind of uh, vascular injury, which uh, is very common. And uh, in the, pro the problem is in some cases of knee dislocation, we don't suspect that they are in knee dislocation until we really explore them, because the, in most of the cases they're reduced spontaneously. So be aware of vascular injury. They can put you in jail, and it, this is an ending career not only for the patient, but also for you. So be aware of uh, vascular issue always. One stage in cases with uh, collateral ligament not as uh, destroyed, uh, injured, let's say, grade one, grade two, and it's better three weeks than six. And in those cases that uh, are amenable to repair with grade three, and capsular avulsion and muscle tendons avulsion, it's better to repair first uh, as much as you can the first ten, uh, ten, uh, the first week and then wait for six to eight weeks to restore full range of motion to perform the uh, reconstruction this is also uh, my uh, uh, recent uh, um, instagram account that I, I opened one month ago where i'm, I'm posting uh, um, clinical cases uh, um, every every two days uh, complex cases also surgical techniques and um, and different uh, you know uh, highlights and studies of, of the art of different uh, of different knee conditions. I invite you to to follow. You will see there that I, I post uh, a case presentation. Um, then I ask for uh, recommendations. And two days uh, later, usually I post what I done. But it doesn't mean that it's the correct. But it is what what I done with some some videos. So I encourage you to 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 follow this so we can all share. And uh, not only what I'm posting, but also your point of view of these uh, of these cases. This is it. Thank you. Thank you, Thank Pablo. You. Thank you. Thank you, Doctor uh, Pablo. Uh, uh, now it's uh, open for uh, discussions. Any uh, questions from uh, the audience or the is there any question from the uh, audience? For the audience? So, yes. Yes. Please. Yeah, please. Go ahead. Injury, and the patient undergoes vascular repair. Then what? When will you? What's the timing of your repair? Collaterals and uh, uh, cruciate ligaments. After, after, vascular, after the vascular repair. Yeah, yeah. Basically, when the vascular surgeon allows me to do that, <laughs> but if it depends on me, it depends. Really, depends. Usually, they are already with the external fixator. So, usually, what I do in those cases is uh, when, uh, when really, when the vascular surgeon allows me to do that, I can take the, the external fixator out, and I perform a chest uh, external fixation removal and arthrolysis to restore the operation motion because after two or three weeks of a external fixator, of course, the uh, knee will be stiff. So my first uh, step will be to restore the range of motion, but just taking the external fixation, the external fixation out, and while it is, re it is restored, perhaps two or three weeks later, I, I will schedule uh, the, the final surgery, the ligament surgery. Okay, thank you. Pablo, you, you spoke about the uh, timing of the repair. And suppose it's the no, 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 no vascular injury. There is no neural injury. In that situation, will you go ahead with all four ligament reconstruction? The collateral as well as cruciate? One stage? Uh, well, as I said before, it depends on the, the, which scenario we're talking about. 
let's say that the patient has nothing in the rest of the body, of course, which is rarely the case because some of these patients has already injury in all parts of the body. So you are really, you know, depending on the condition of the rest of the body. But if, uh, if uh, we have a, a case with a, that not much capsule avulsion, non, any, that something that you, 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 you don't really need, you, you, you don't really believe that uh, providing a repair can add some advantage, in those cases I perform uh, one stage, one surgery around three or four weeks, even three or four ligaments just in one stage. But this is not very important. I mean, if you don't feel comfortable or confident to do that in one stage, you can do it in twice. Uh, you can do perhaps uh, the, lateral, the, the collateral ligaments and then the cruciate, or, well, there is a, you know, uh, uh, ongoing controversy regarding which the central pivot first or the collateral ligament, we can talk about that later, but usually I try to do it in, uh, in one time. But in the case that where I see avulsions, uh, fracture, uh, all the lateral capsule, uh, again, uh, Dr. Leyes will show you, I think, some of these uh, scenarios. In those cases, I think we have to first repair the lateral and medial side to not to do nothing, in not to do anything in the uh, in the cruciate and operating the cruciate in a later uh, step. So, uh, in case you have the peroneal nerve injury, how how is uh, how is your approach? Do you proceed with the immediate uh, exploration on the this side, or will you wait? Isolated peroneal with knee dystonia. Um, I really act ex exactly the same if I have a peroneal nerve injury or not. The only difference will be the expectation, the patient expectation. You have to exp tell them that if they have a complete palsy of the peroneal nerve, the chance of recovery is low. If you have a partial injury, the chance of recovery is high. So if uh, I had to perform something in the lateral side, which is more commonly uh, associated with peroneal nerve injuries, uh, in those cases, in most, of, uh, in most of the surgeries, you already have to uh, identify the nerve and you cannot, in that situation, to do some neurolysis. But this is something that if there is no uh, uh, science behind this. There is no evidence that uh, provides any kind of exploration or, um, uh, or neurolysis provide any benefits. So from my point of view, uh, best not to harm just leave the nerve where it is and the biology will do its best. The only thing you can pro produce by, uh, by touching the, the nerve more is by perhaps to do also already uh, further injury in the, in the nerve. So the idea of having a nerve injury, not only in the knee, but in most of part of the body, in acute setting and go and to, uh, and to see how it is and to perform some repair, it's not uh, uh, supported by the literature. In most of the cases, there has some in, uh, uh, some in the Hals and Lewy fracture in the, in, the, uh, in the upper limb, but there are very few exceptions where uh, a nerve injury, a traumatic nerve injury, uh, without, of course, uh, uh, something with a, with a knife, uh, should be explored acutely. Secondly, I just wanted to know from you because since you are involved in any high high velocity trauma at uh, your institute and you must be seeing a lot of accidents. So in those situations, when you are dealing with a vascular case along with multi-ligament repair, do you do any kind of ligament repair immediately after the vascular surgeon, surgeon is doing it? Because that will add. Suppose uh, if uh, the vascular surgeon has done the vascular repair, in that situation, will you like to add the PCL repair, maybe, so that the central pivot is maintained? Uh, in an ideal world, perhaps, but uh, in those situations, after the vascular repair, after many hours of ischemia, because when the vascular surgery is uh, successful, it has been it has been going through many hours, several hours without uh, perfusion in the distal in the distal uh, limb. The distal area of the limb. So, um, in I, I usually don't don't do anything when uh, the vascular surgery, other than uh, uh, placing and fixing the the leg with the, the knee with the external fixator. No, I don't think that is a, is a moment to do any any kind of repair. In those situations, uh, you first of all you have to think in saving uh, the limb, 
rather than having a slightly a better uh, stability and uh, outcomes in the in, in the knee. So it's uh, it's not time for thinking in in coming back to run, <laughs> but uh, to say that. So there are two questions from YouTube, like, uh, one from Dr. Sebastian Meller and one from John Sarita. But they're all related to the repair of the ligament. I think we will take both this question after the uh, manual is uh, talk. Is there any is is there any question from the other panelists here? Dr. Anil, Dr. Rajiv, Dr. Yeah, uh, yeah Pablo, Pablo, excellent talk. So, whenever do you go for repair in acute setting less than two weeks, it's isolated repair or repair with augmentation? Because isolated repair has shown poor results rather than repair with augmentation. Yeah. Yeah, it's a very good question. That's why I said at the beginning that it depends. I was talking in general. Just... But then when you, have, you go to a specific injuries, of course, you have to really talk about that. In the media side, is in acute setting, of course, is repair. There's no doubt about that. I will never augment anything in the media side in acute setting. We are talking in acute setting. I don't, I don't believe you need anything, not only grab, but only also uh, internal brace. That's, let, let, let us, uh, allow me to say that that's bullshit. Uh, so in the media side, there is, I think, much more agreement. The controversy is more in the lateral side. Lateral side has, has shown that the uh, repair is not uh, a procedure uh, that provides as good uh, result as the reconstruction. Despite that, of course, you can have uh, FCL avulsion fracture and also some kind of, uh, of for example, a bicep tendon, a bicep femoris tendon avulsion. In those cases, you can repair it. And also, all the, the, the whole capsule, in some cases, in acute, if, for example, if you already have to do some reattachment of the bicep tendon or the FCL, you also can uh, advance the whole posterolateral capsule to the to the femur and to the tibia. And in the second stage, if it wasn't uh, uh, good enough, you can perform now some kind of uh, augmentation. In acute acute setting, when you are doing this kind of repair. Uh, I, I wouldn't do much reconstruction. Just we are trying to put everything back. Of course, you can think again. There are so many different scenarios, but this is a recommendation just for acute, uh, very acute uh, repair. Perhaps you don't even have time to request uh, um, some some kind of some 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 kind of graft. So I will let this first kill and let's see uh, how it works. You will see now with uh, my, uh, Dr. Leyes. He has beautiful repair of the lateral side without augmentation uh, in, a, in very acute when everything is absolutely abused with a very strong uh, uh, um, stability. Dr. Pablo, the velocity of the injury has any bearings on your decision for a early versus the late intervention in multi-ligament injury? Early means single stage, all ligaments and delayed in stage manner. What's my, uh, can, can you say it again? When do I decide to do that? Uh, if, if you happen to, if you happen to have a high velocity injury. Okay. High velocity meaning there is a lot of uh, bone edema and a lot of contusions on the both the sides. Does that have any bearing in your decision for one stage? It's a very good point. As I was saying before, most of the cases are uh, high energy trauma. Uh, car accidents. Some, of course, are also are, are due to a sport accident, uh, uh, rugby or something, even football. But football is not that common to be, to have multi ligament. Um, so it's, it's a very good point. What to do when you have all bone marrow or edema, uh, a lot of pain. So you have to really, you know, tailor uh, each decision to each patient. If you have a high energy uh, injury. I suspect also that this patient will also have some other organs injury. It won't be only only the knee. So at the end, for one reason or to the or the other, you have to wait. I never recommend not in multiligament. I never recommend to operate anything uh, in in the knee when you have edema or high pain or something like that. So at the end, I think it's very difficult. I'm sorry not to be very concrete and very uh, with the, with the answer. But, uh, I, I get your drift that uh, in high velocity you would air it towards the two stage rather than the one stage. That is what you are trying to say. 
Yeah, it, it just got the got the audio. Can you can you say it again? Because I couldn't hear. I, I get your uh, drift. What you are trying to say, I get that. Thank you. Okay, okay. Thank you. Yeah, uh, yeah, is, is yeah, there no, any I have, yes. yeah, I have one question. Uh, hello. Hello. Yes. Hello. Yes. Yes. Hello. Yes, hello. You can. Yes, Ani. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, I have a question for uh, Dr. Pablo. Yeah. Now, uh, your preference of uh, uh, graft, if you have, uh, you know, uh, that is KD3 or KD4, you know, your graft preference, and does it change depending upon, uh, you know, uh, your staging, uh, how you do the, you know, how you manage all the four uh, or three ligaments? Uh, it's a very good question. In, in, in two weeks' time, I will have a crossfire about multi ligament injuries, knee injuries with uh, Jorge Chala. Uh, I will, I will post the, the link. And one of the topics we will discuss is uh, graph choice, and uh, not only uh, allograph, but autograph. Because at the end, depends not only what you want, but also what you can get. In my cases, my tissue bank is superb. So I can ask them to give me anything I want, and I have it the following day. In multiple <laughs> injuries, if I had to choose, I am, I'm not a pro allograph guy, I must tell you. I think they are just for multiligament or some, some specific exception cases. I think that what we have, autograph, is much better. Even going to the contralateral side, I perform many things of this. But in multiligament, when you have three uh, or four ligaments insured, I think the best thing to do and most reasonable is to go for, uh, for allograph. Different allograph for the, for lateral side. I usually use uh, soft tissue, uh, anterior tibialis, posterior tibialis, semitendinosus. Uh, for medial side, depending is, if I have a PCL, usually a double bundle uh, Achilles uh, Achilles tendon allograft. Uh, ACL uh, perhaps with a, also soft tissue. We are talking allograft. For example, when, uh, in some cases that uh, you have not only PCL but also MCL, what you can do with the Achilles allograft is to uh, have a long Achilles allograft and going out through the medial epicondyle and the rest of this uh, Achilles tendon allograft not, uh, will, will help you to, to, to reconstruct the, the medial side. So it depends on which scenario. But if I have to choose is allograft in most of my multiligament cases. Roshan, one question. Yes. Um, uh, follow in continuous to our Sanjay, previous uh, question by Sanjay, he said that high velocity injuries generally they go for stiffness. Yeah. High velocity knee dislocations. Now, what you are talking mostly are low, low velocity dislocation sports injuries, but high velocity knee dislocations since they go for stiffness, that is the reason you wait for those cases, they don't go aggressively. What is uh, how it differ? I, I, I don't get really what you're saying. I mean, if uh, in this high velocity accidents, uh, high velocity, uh, Dr. Pablo is trying velocity. to say the uh, what is the basis of your decision in high energy dislocation uh, decision to stage the surgery? Is it because in high velocity there is more arthrofibrosis or any other reason? Well, in, in any case that you perform uh, uh, in one stage, the risk of arthrofibrosis perhaps is higher than you have two surgeries. But uh, also, uh, if you are uh, the patients, let me ask you uh, if you prefer to have one or two surgeries. At the end, it's, uh, that's very important. It's not only our point of view. Of course, the patient will always uh, uh, prefer one surgery. We have to, all, of course, to uh, tell them uh, that uh, perhaps the risk of fibrosis is higher, but not only this. I mean, in any surgery, the most aggressive the, the injury, the most aggressive the surgery, the, the higher risk of fibrosis. But I think the worst thing that can happen if you have an fibrosis is the needs for going for uh, arthrolysis, which is, I mean, it's not that... Uh, if you have a multiligament injury and the problem is the fibrosis, that means that all the, 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 the tissue is really stiff. So I prefer this rather than having a too loose uh, reconstruction. So it's not something that I'm really, really scared of. Okay, I think... Yeah, Dr. Pablo? Yes, Anil? Yeah. Dr. Yes, Pablo, how much uh, you rely on ankle brachial decks? 
you rely on ankle bronchial index and the pulse or you straight away uh, do the vascular study to all the patients uh, coming with dislocations so as not to miss any intimal injury but the problem is not the, the problem is not the intimal injury the problem is to know which intimal injury will lead to a real the intimal injury is nothing the intimal injury if you have an intimal injury, perhaps you have an intimal injury now. Nobody knows. It doesn't happen anything. The problem is to know when this intimal injury will go to a complete obstruction of the of the of the popliteal artery. In those cases, that that's why I said that if you perform arteriography to everyone, you will be operating much more patient than you really need because most of most of this intimal injury will not go uh, uh, to a farther blockage. Okay, uh, for their obstruction of the uh, popliteal artery. That's I 100% rely on the uh, ABPI uh, index. Yeah, ABPI. I think uh, Sanjay uh, and Anil Patil. I think we should go ahead with the next talk. Uh, Anil. Doctor Anil, can you hear us? Anil, if you can't hear Sanjay, why you can go ahead. I'll just mute everyone manually. Yep, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. I'll just mute everyone except you. So that okay. there is no disturbance. Okay, you can go ahead. Hello, good evening to all of you. Uh, thank you very much for the invitation, uh, Roshan. I'm really happy to participate uh, in this webinar. And, and as Pablo uh, said, I'm going to talk about primary repair of uh, multiple ligament injuries. Uh, just uh, a brief introduction. Uh, I work in a private orthopedic hospital in uh, Madrid. It's a, a medium-sized hospital with 120 beds, but we are quite busy. We do a lot of procedures and uh, we take care of a lot of uh, athletes, both uh, professional and amateur. In order uh, to perform uh, reconstruction, a uh, repair of the injured ligaments, it is very important to know the anatomy. And if we start uh, from the lateral side, uh, the three main stabilizers are the fibular collateral ligament, the popliteofibular ligament, and finally the popliteus uh, tendon. But if we take a closer look uh, to the fibula, uh, we can see that the tip of the fibula is the attachment area for the popliteofibular ligament and also for the fibular and arcuate ligaments. While uh, the biceps tendon and the lateral collateral ligament insert more lateral and uh, more distal. Uh, taking a closer view from, from the, to the fibula from upside, we can see uh, that the insertion of the biceps is uh, posterior and lateral to the insertion of the lateral collateral ligament. And the popliteofibular and the arcuate complex are more medial and more posterior to the biceps tendon. The uh, insertion of the biceps tendon is uh, quite complex. It has uh, three different footprints on the fibula. There is a proximal footprint, a distal footprint, and there is a medial footprint. And there is also another uh, insertion at uh, the lateral uh, cortex of the tibia, which is just distal to the anterolateral uh, ligament. So if we know the anatomy, uh, when we see this type of fracture, which is an elliptical piece of bone, very thin, with a horizontal uh, long axis, we uh, can uh, diagnose that is a, an avulsion of the arcuate complex which is different uh, than the avulsion that we see when we have a biceps femoris avulsion. In these cases, the piece of bone is uh, much larger and irregular. So starting from the easy cases, how do we fix uh, uh, an avulsion of the biceps uh, tendon? There are many different options, but uh, biomechanically, the best one 
is to do a transosseous repair. We have to perform a blind tunnel on the fibula. This is one of the cases. Uh, this is a soccer player. Uh, you must know that uh, this is not an uncommon injury in soccer players. It happens when the player is going to fall and he tries to stand up, so he makes a very strong contraction of the biceps tendon and it can get a bulge. This is one case with a, 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 a periosteal avulsion of the lateral collateral ligament and also an avulsion of the biceps tendon. Uh, you can see here it's a, a partial avulsion of the lateral collateral ligament. It's not fully avulsed and also partial avulsion of the biceps tendon. And this is an old case. And in this case, uh, we reattach it with two anchors, uh, one in the fibula and a second one uh, on the tibia. This is not the way we are doing it now. Uh, 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 we have done so far nine soccer players and now we are doing transosseous technique. It is a straightforward technique. Uh, we perform a, a blind a tunnel that goes uh, all the way to the middle of the fibula, eight, meter, eight millimeter tunnel, and then two small holes with a Kirchner wire uh, that uh, uh, allow us uh, to tie uh, the sutures. Uh, we do a crack of suture with eddy bone and we tied uh, the sutures to the anterior cortex of the fibula. So uh, you can see in the video how the tendon gets inside the fibula. It's a very uh, straightforward technique, uh, and I can tell you that we have achieved uh, very good results in professional soccer players. This is one of the first cases. He plays for Getafe, a first division uh, club in, uh, in the Spanish league. More complex cases. This is an other soccer injury. Uh, this player uh, was injured when uh, two players hit the ball at the same time. And uh, we took an uh, x-ray and you can see here uh, an avulsion uh, from the fibular head. When we uh, did the MRI, he had a very severe injury uh, with a, a distal avulsion of the ACL and a, 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 an avulsion of the lateral collateral ligament, uh, the posterolateral capsule, the iliotibial band, and uh, also the biceps tendon. When we examine uh, the, the, the patient, you can see here that uh, all the fragments are really, really small, small fragments, and there is an opening uh, uh, of the joint line where we perform a, a virus stress. So uh, in this case, uh, we decided to do acute uh, surgery and uh, we, perf uh, we, we repair all the injured uh, structures with multiple anchors and uh, we also perform a simultaneous ACL reconstruction with uh, an allograft. Uh, we were able to achieve uh, good intraop stability, both on the lateral side and also uh, of, on the anterior cruciate ligament. This is the patient uh, six months after surgery. Uh, a little bit of lack of flexion, very good stability, uh, both on the lateral side and uh, on the uh, AP stability was also very good, no lagman at all. And he was able six months after to walk uh, without a limp. And uh, he had a relatively good range of motion, even though he lost uh, like uh, the last 20 degrees of flexion. Another case, uh, this is a 22-year-old runner who was doing um, running in the mountains. And he got injured, a severe injury with uh, uh, most of the structures above from the fibula and also uh, a bicruciate ligament injury, both ACL, PCL, and lateral collateral ligament. Uh, on physical exam, uh, there was a clear opening on the lateral side in full extension and also in flexion. Uh, and uh, we also, uh, you can see there is also posterior and anterior instability and uh, also rotational instability and uh, uh, there was also hyperextension of his of his knee so like uh, pablo mentioned before in these severe cases 
uh, we prefer to do a stage procedure uh, to avoid the risk of a compartment syndrome. Uh, so we decided to repair the lateral side. Uh, this is an acute surgery, so the, the structures are easily uh, recognizable. We always uh, look for the peroneal nerve. Uh, you can see here that the peroneal nerve is okay and all the above structures. And uh, we used, uh, in this case, uh, three anchors uh, to repair all the structures, one at the fibula and uh, two at the tibia. We can see here the post-op uh, uh, MRI uh, with uh, the uh, structures healed uh, uh, in its place. So, and then uh, eight months, uh, sorry, eight weeks after the initial repair, uh, we decided to perform the anterior cruciate ligament reconstruction. The PCL uh, was uh, already healed. Uh, recently, uh, one author described a, a double row repair for the posterolateral structures. Uh, it's a very interesting technique. It's similar to the one we perform with rotator cuff tears. And uh, now we are using this technique. Let me show you this case. Also, a posterolateral injury. And um, uh, the, the patient uh, uh, come is, is a friend uh, of one of our orthopedic surgeons and he comes from Canary Islands and he, ha he had this injury and uh, uh, the islands where he's from, they perform a fasciotomy because there was a, they, 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 they were concerned with a compartment syndrome. So th those two incisions that you see are from the fasciotomy. Uh, on physical exam, uh, you can see that there is a marked recurvatum uh, there's a, a lateral opening, uh, posterior instability. So uh, we also decided to do a stage procedure. And uh, in this case, it's, it's already uh, three weeks after injury. And as you can see, the structures are not as nice as the previous cases, but we still uh, have a decent uh, uh, structures that we can uh, repair. Uh, one thing that I want to tell you about is uh, the peroneal nerve. You can, you can see here the peroneal nerve with a severe injury due to traction. Uh, my experience with the peroneal nerve is uh, much worse than uh, the, the one that Pablo described in the literature. Most of my cases that have a uh, nerve injury or almost never recover. And even in some athletes, I consider uh, doing a palliative procedure uh, at the foot, like a tibialis posterior uh, emi transfer, because at the end, uh, they, they are not going to get back. So in this case, very severe injury, never, never recovered. And uh, I start to perform the double row repair. I put my first row of anchors, uh, which are uh, just uh, distal to the joint line. And, and there I place uh, two anchors. Usually they are number five anchors, double loaded with two sutures. And uh, I continue doing my first row. And then I put another row uh, distal to it. One, is the, one interesting thing I want to show you is what can you do to reattach the fragments to the fibula uh, when you don't have a good piece of bone? Uh, this is a very useful trick, is that uh, to put the anchor uh, along the axis of the fibula. You can get very, very, very strong hold. It is very safe, very easy, and there is no risk of damaging uh, the, the peroneal nerve. Uh, this technique is also helpful if you happen to have a blowout of your uh, fibular tunnel when doing a laprad or an arciero procedure. Very easy procedure, okay? So here we have uh, the two rows and the fibular anchor, and uh, now we, you, you just tie all this, and you get a very, very strong repair. In some cases, uh, you have a big piece of bone, and you are able uh, to reattach it with a uh, a plate with a screw or a third clutch, but that's not that common. What about the medial side? 
Well, the indications for acute surgery on the medial side include a, a bony avulsion of the medial collateral ligament from the epicondyle. Also, when you have an interposition of the deep MCL under the medial meniscus, I also do it when, we ha when I have a combined PCL and an MCL injury. When you have both cruciate ligaments and the MCL, and also, as Pablo stated before, uh, when you have open injuries. This is one case. You can see here that the medial collateral ligament is completely above from the medial epicondyle. So I think it's very, very, uh, it's not pro most likely you are not going to have a good result with conservative treatment. So in these cases, uh, I prefer to do a direct repair. Uh, a very interesting uh, injury that you sometimes uh, have is uh, what we call uh, the Stener lesion of the knee. And th this is a full abulsion of the superficial MCL from its distal attachment. And the MCL uh, uh, ends up uh, lying over the hamstring tendon. So uh, there is no way that is going to heal back to its uh, original footprint because the hamstring tendons are uh, just beneath them. So this is also for me an indication to perform an acute uh, surgery. You can see here uh, all the ligament fully uh, detached and uh, right here uh, will be uh, the hamstring tendons and the attachment is uh, deeper to the hamstring tendons. Uh, if you perform uh, uh, acute repair to the original footprint, uh, you can see uh, that is uh, isometric and uh, there is a, uh, you can get very good repair without the need uh, for augmentation. Uh, another interesting case is uh, uh, when you have to do uh, a chronic cases, and you're going to do a reconstruction, but you can also combine it with a repair. I usually perform uh, uh, a repair of the deep MCL uh, with suture anchors, and then I add my uh, re reconstruction with an allograft. This is another scenario. It's a, a patient who uh, injured his knee uh, while jumping from a height of 10 meters, and uh, he, he suffered uh, combined injury to the PCL and MCL. Uh, this uh, is a, a case that uh, uh, already uh, Pablo talked about, and I think it, uh, you can see in the physical exam that there is a, a medial opening. Well, it, it's not working, but it's okay. It, there is a medial opening, and also, so uh, we can see here a, a complete abulsion of the PCL and also a proximal abulsion of the MCL. So uh, this is a, an ideal combination uh, to perform a simultaneous reconstruction of both ligaments with a single graft. I use a, an Achilles allograft. Uh, you have to change a little bit uh, the direction of the guide. It is a, a more perpendicular tunnel than usual, but uh, you can get a very good reconstruction. Here you see, uh, the uh, Achilles allograft already through the PCL tunnels. Uh, you fix the PCL and then uh, I open my graft and I repair my uh, 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 medial collateral ligament. And finally, I suture uh, the remnants of his original MCL to my uh, allograft. And therefore, I can get a very, very solid uh, reconstruction. Uh, and in fact, uh, it was really, really stable and the patient went back to, to sport. Uh, what do you do if you have a combined uh, ACL, uh, PCL, MCL, uh, medial patellofemoral ligament? Like this case, everything is torn. There is nothing in the uh, intercondylar notch. Everything is torn. And there is also a tear of the medial patellofemoral ligament, and also see the medial side. This is a terrible medial side. The quality of the tissue is really poor. So in these cases, 
you really cannot rely in doing a primary repair uh, and you have to do uh, reconstruction with uh, uh, allograft. So we use the same allograft for the PCL and the MCL and another allograft for the ACL. Also achieving a, a very good stability. Uh, so uh, this uh, has been already been mentioned in the previous talk. Uh, there are controversy data in the literature. There are some papers that uh, find no difference between primary repair and reconstruction. But uh, uh, recently, uh, two papers, uh, one from Levy and one from Standard, uh, particularly on the lateral side, uh, they think that reconstruction uh, uh, provides a much safer reconstruction than repair with a much lower failure rate. But at the end, uh, I think it really depends on the quality of the tissue. I mean, if, if, you, if you are doing the surgery and you, th and you feel that the tissue is very, very strong and it's good quality, I don't see no reason why not to do a, 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 a repair. And if you don't like the tissue, uh, you also have the opportunity to augment it with a uh, reconstruction. Or if you are going to do a stage procedure, as Pablo mentioned before, you can come back and do an augment, a reconstruction if you are not happy with the result of stability. So in conclusion, I think it is useful to do a primary repair. Ideally, you should do it early, less than three weeks, but I would suggest that even earlier, there is a study by Richter that compare the results one week uh, after trauma or after, and the results were better the sooner you do the repair. Thank you very much uh, for your attention. Uh, I'll also want you to invite me to follow me at my Instagram account, where I also uh, load a lot of uh, difficult cases. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Blaze, for a uh, very interesting deliberation of the your acute repair for the injury. Now, uh, is there any questions from the group yeah. right now? Yeah, yeah, we have a few, few, few questions. Sanjay, can I ask one question? Yes, yes Samir, please. go ahead. Yeah, like uh, uh, Dr. Manuel, you have just shown, like uh, as we know, the uh, anatomical point for MCL and PCL is different. But you have shown in your cases, you are using the same allograft for PCL as well as MCL. Yeah. So whether you are using outside in a femoral tunnel for PCL. Yeah. Yeah, you are, you are right. It is not uh, the perfect technique. You have to change uh, a little bit uh, the uh, obliquity of your graft. But uh, I can tell you uh, it works. It, it provides you uh, with a very stable uh, knee. Uh, uh, you have... Uh, very uh, strong fixation uh, for your MCL because it's a single graft and uh, you fix it in the uh, tunnel of the PCL. And uh, besides, uh, you also uh, repair uh, your, the, the original MCL to your augmentation, to your reconstruction. So uh, really it hasn't been a problem for me uh, despite your uh, comments that is not really anatomic, but it, it really works well for me. And why do you think, why do I do it? Because if, if I do a stage procedure and I just repair the MCL uh, with a PCL uh, injury, uh, I know uh, that uh, it's going to stress my repair and probably uh, uh, my results on the medial side will be worse. So I prefer to do it acutely. Uh, and uh, I've done it many times, many times. And, and also it's not uh, the case today, but I've done similar technique for ACL lateral collateral ligament. Same graft uh, to repair the ACL and the lateral collateral ligament. And, and what it, about POL, sir? Well, a very good question. Uh, once you have done your PCL, MCL, then you have to check again uh, your uh, uh, rotational stability. If there is an increase in external rotation or the medial tibial, medial tibial plateau subluxes anteriorly, then you have to do 
a reefing of the of, of the POL. If if there is uh, enough good tissue, uh, you suture the POL to uh, your repair. If you don't have tissue, then uh, you you will have to split. Uh, you, you cannot do that because you have already finished it, but the, the ideal technique, if there is a lot of, uh, uh, of rotational instability, is to split your allograft in two when it comes out of the uh, tibial tunnel. And uh, the anterior part, you reconstruct the uh, superficial MCL, and uh, with the posterior part of your graft, uh, you reconstruct your POL. It's not anatomic, again, it's not re really the exact anatomic, but it, but it works. It works. Any problems with stiffness after doing this? Uh, you may have uh, uh, some stiffness. Uh, to prevent that, I think we have changed our rehab protocol. We are going we are going faster than we used to to go, and we allow a earlier range of motion with these uh, dynamic PCL braces that prevent the posterior sac. And this has decreased for us uh, the stiffness. But uh, as Dr. Gelber said before, uh, it's not too bad to have a little bit of a stiffness in these knees because uh, usually it's the opposite. You get a little bit of a medial opening. So if it gets a little bit, uh, I mean, if you have a soccer player and he loses like 20 degrees of knee flexion, he can still be a good soccer player. But if he has a little bit of medial opening, then he's no longer going to be a soccer player. So I, I will allow a little bit of stiffness. Uh, uh, ideally, <laughs> the, the lesser the better, but it's not too bad to have a little bit of stiffness. Uh, Emmanuel, I want to ask you a question related to your uh, sequence of repair in multiligament. That is, there is a question from Sebastian Malier. He wants to know how how is the sequence of repair when there are four ligaments with academic? Oh yeah, which, very, which, very, will you, which will you try it first, PCL, MCL, or NCL? Which one? Yeah, that is that, that's a very good question, <laughs> and, and and I can tell you that there is a controversy in the literature. Uh, for me, uh, the number one is uh, PCL because always uh, the problem for me is posterior sac in this uh, multiple ligament injury. So I want to correct my uh, posterior sac and I, I want to do my PCL first and uh, and then I, I would go uh, to uh, the lateral side, uh, LCL, uh, then popliteus and ACL. But uh, we have a lot of discussion and there are some papers in, in the literature that advocate uh, starting with the ACL because uh, they found that it was, uh, they had a more anatomic reduction, but in my hands, uh, with these uh, multiple ligament injuries, always the problem is a little bit of a uh, posterior lateral sag. I'm, I'm never worried about anterior drawer. It's always a little bit of posterior lateral. So uh, I want really to to uh, to start uh, reducing my posterior the tibia. Yeah, there is another question on the YouTube uh, channel. There is uh, how can we say that in cases of high multi directional instability? It's better to repair all the extra articular structures as possible or uh, wait wait to get full range of motion to perform intraarticular reconstruction. Do you mean to say that uh, you do a stage reconstruction when you have all four ligaments? Uh, yeah, as Pablo mentioned before, uh, there is a, a, a definite risk of a, a compartment syndrome and extra basation if you have a uh, severe damage to the capsule or a, a complete avulsion of the ligaments, it, it, it is difficult uh, to perform the arthroscopy. Uh, you, you may do a dry arthroscopy, but makes it more cumbersome. And so if I have a very severe uh, injury, uh, I, I'd rather do a primary repair and then come back uh, two months afterwards uh, to, to do the, the, the cruciate ligaments. And uh, to my surprise, in some cases, uh, I have planned to do PCL and ACL on the second stage. Um, uh, and by the time I arrive to the second stage, I have enough healing of the PCL. So, so, sometimes I end up not doing the PCL. And uh, if I did, uh, had I done it at the first time, uh, I would probably have repaired all of them. 
And sometimes you find that there's enough healing in eight weeks that you can avoid uh, doing another uh, another ligament. So okay. uh, there is one more question from Dr. Jacob. Jacob, are you there on the line? Jacob, Jacob Vargas. So Jacob wants to know if the medial side repair has got better results uh, than reconstruction. Is it uh, true, uh, Emmanuel, that medial side uh, repair is better than the reconstruction? Well, uh, I think that the results uh, probably are equal, but uh, in many cases, uh, there is no need uh, to do a reconstruction because the quality of the tissue on the medial side is, uh, is good enough. Uh, usually, um, when you have a combined uh, ACL, MCL injury, um, we usually treat the MCL conservatively and uh, when we think it's healed, we do the ACL. But sometimes when you go to do the ACL, the MCL is not completely healed. You are not happy with the medial side stability. So in such cases, uh, I prefer to do a reconstruction of the uh, medial side because it's been already six weeks, eight weeks since the injury and uh, the quality of the medial side uh, tissue may, be not, may, may not be as good as you would like to. So in such cases, uh, I would go for a reconstruction. But if, if I treat them acutely, uh, most of the times the quality of the tissue is, is good enough to to do a, a, a primary repair. So my question to Pablo and Manuel both, that uh, if you are dealing with the case where there is a full ACL, PCL, LCL ligament reconstruction, do you like to do the anatomical reconstruction along with repair primary? Because PLC, postural corner, according to you, is not the one which is going to the last, especially the uh, the st standard and uh, levy uh, articles. They have shown that repair is not the best in PLC. Yeah. So in those situations, the acute scenario, you will do a Laprat type of reconstruction. You will do just a, a Larsen type of or Arcelor type of reconstruction. Uh, um, I think that uh, Pablo and uh, myself uh, have a little bit uh, different approach. Uh, uh, I feel pretty confident confident with the Laprat technique. Uh, I know he likes Arciero <laughs> a little bit more, but uh, uh, I, I agree with you. Uh, uh, unless it is an acute case and you have... Uh, a good quality tissue because I don't think it's uh, like generalizing this in this type of injuries makes no sense I mean uh, what is the result of the repair it depends on the quality of the tissue and it depends on the quality of the repair but if the quality is good you can do a repair if you have to do a chronic case or the quality of the tissue is not as good uh, I will probably do a, a, a modified uh, uh, La Prada Engebretsen uh, and I, I, I do modify because I use the same graft for the ACL and the, AC, and the lateral collateral ligament. I don't want to do uh, a, a lot of uh, holes into my femur, so I prefer to use the same graft for the ACL and the lateral collateral ligament. And then I do a, nice, a different graft for the popliteus tendon. And, uh, and, and if he needs also, I can do a PCL. Pablo, I, I Pablo you have any different approach? With Manuel, or you agree with me? I know you are good friends. Yeah, we are. <laughs> well, but again, he's a Real Madrid supporter. I'm yeah. <laughs> so, if we can be still friends with the football, of course, we can be much even more with a different approach in knee surgery. Not, uh, no, but basically, the, my talk is gonna gonna be partially a, a, about this. We can we can wait for that. But uh, basically, for the postural corner, I. I uh, it depends from my point of view in which degree of injury we are talking about. Because uh, if you have a severe injury, as uh, most of the cases that uh, Manuel uh, Manuel has been showing, uh, I, I opt also for a La Prade or even a Lee technique, something like that. But I think in my in my cases, most of the cases, uh, most of the patients uh, don't have uh, so severe injury. So in those cases, I perform are zero or, or a ZAN technique that will uh, describe in my presentation. But it depends on the degree of knee of potriatal coronary injury. So what is best, the Real Madrid or Barcelona FC? 
here I'm really, you know, <laughs> assertive. You, you, you have to answer it before you leave the uh, today's meeting. The best one is Ma Madrid, uh, Real Madrid or Barcelona FC? I, I, I think the, this is uh, such an easy question that <laughs> really... <laughs> Okay, is, is there any question from other, other you know, panelists? You know, there was, a, can I tell, just yes. say a, a bit? Yes, a, yes, yes, yes. There was a game a long, 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 long time ago that uh, Barcelona scored 5 nil to Real Madrid. And, and these guys from Barcelona, uh, they did a meniscal transplantation and they, wrote, and they wrote in the meniscus 5 to zero, and they sent me the video. I mean, inside the patient, <laughs> they yeah. wrote five uh, zero. <laughs> I would think that I, I operate on this patient. She was a, a football player, a female football player of Barcelona. So she was really, really happy about that. <laughs> there, but, but there was no Argentinian star at that time. But now we have two Argentinian stars. One is Lionel Messi and second is Pablo Galvez. Oh, yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> My mother said the same. Yes, thank you. <laughs> So I uh, think uh, Roshan, Roshan, yes, one. Yes, JP, yes, yes, yeah, yes, yeah. JP, yes. This uh, for the man, uh, Lewis. So Lewis, uh, in um, uh, postlateral corner repair, a patient uh, suppose a patient with the high BMI, high BMI, uh, active young individual who comes to you, so like a sportsman. So, do you repair or um, uh, even if a repair is very good? On your hand, um, no, in the intraoperatively, do you leave at that point, uh, repair and leave it, or you want to augment those patients? I, I don't. I'm not sure. I got the question. So it's an acute injury on the lateral acute side. Injury, young patient, high BMI, uh, sportsman. Okay. Uh, a PLC avulsion. Do you augment or uh, do you repair and leave it? Yeah. Well, that's a very good question. If he has a uh, a very high VMI, and also uh, I think it also depends a lot of the on the alignment of the knee. If he has a, a barrows alignment of the knee, a heavy patient contact sport, I will probably do a, a primary with augmentation because uh, those are difficult cases that it's very difficult to stabilize the knee. Uh, so in such cases, uh, I probably will not rely just on my repair. I will probably augment with the uh, allograft tissue. Uh, especially if he has a barrel alignment and he is involved in contact sports. Uh, those are very difficult cases. I will probably do both. Is there any question to both of the speakers or we will move on to the Pablo stop? Okay. So I think there is no question, no more questions. Uh, uh, Sanjeeva, you can go ahead with the program. Anil? Yeah, may I invite now Pablo Galber to give his uh, thoughts on the career threatening multi ligament injury management for athlete. Okay, can you see the presentation now? Yeah, I'll just mute yes. all, Pablo. I'm mute. Oh, sorry. No, I'll mute everyone, then I'll unmute. Uh okay, basically, uh, I will talk about. Uh, just to explain the title, which is a little bit tricky or challenging to understand, is uh, what happening in multi-ligament injuries in athletes. Uh, also, again, uh, Dr. Leyes, Manuel, will, can, can give you uh, very good um, ideas about this. He has a long experience in uh, high and professional athletes, uh, and he can, he can talk about this later in the discussion. Um, we created the, the Nico Lateral uh, Ligament uh, Working Group of ESCA uh, two years ago. I'm the, the chairman until tomorrow, because tomorrow I will, uh, uh, James Robinson will uh, follow the lead. Uh, we have been studying the posterior lateral corner in these two years with different studies, papers, and, and conclusions, and, uh, and also uh, um, different um, cadaver labs we, we did. And now we are switching to the medial side. So some of these uh, results will be shown, not, more, not many here, but a lot in the, in the next ESCA meeting in Milano next year. So uh, coming back to Barcelona Real Madrid, uh, if uh, you have such an extraordinary player and you need to, to restore these skills uh, for doing this 
spectacular maneuvers. Uh, of course, that uh, you need to have a, a perfect surgery and you will need to have, a, not a perfect surgery, but you will need to have a perfect knee. So uh, if we are expecting to have such a perfect functioning knee after this dramatic and high uh, uh, energy accident like this, even in a sport, uh, we are really uh, believing that uh, uh, you know we are not really very realistic. If you also see these kind of injuries in the MRIs, and again expecting this patient to be back, and not only this MRI but also performing these beautiful uh, uh, surgeries, medial side as we are seeing here, lateral side, even double bundle PCR reconstruction, we we really enjoy because we are. Mechanics, we are surgeons, we really love to do this. But again, if we expect that doing after doing this, we will keep, or we will put these uh, players back to do such a, a wonderful uh, uh, maneuvers as we observed before. Uh, we are really uh, lying uh, to the patient. So, in fact, we should send the patient to the to the to the therapist, uh, to the psych psychologist, uh, if, uh, if he's really. Uh, willing to to come back. It's just a problem of uh, expectation because we are unfortunately not heroes. Although some people are, uh, you know, insisting with this or to the to the to the doctors all around the world because the fight with coronavirus, which is not of course our field. But we are not heroes. At, at the end, what we try to do is the best uh, we can. So as Socrates said uh, many years ago, the right way to begin is to pay attention to the young and make them just as cool as possible. We are, again, not heroes, we are just human beings and we can repair and reconstruct what we can repair and reconstruct. And uh, if we, I'm not very prone to speak about uh, literature in the presentation, but I brought these three studies just to figure out uh, how to deal with these multi-ligament injuries in, in athletes. This, uh, uh, this study in injury a few years ago showed that um, the, um, the return to sport to the same level than before is only achieved by 30% of the cases. And also if that after 12 months, you, at 12 months you get the maximum uh, recovery. So you cannot expect a further recovery after 12 months in these uh, specific cases. Also, it has been shown that in this multi-ligament injury, regarding uh, uh, activity score in, for professional athletes, has been shown that rotational uh, stability is better restored than coronal plane, but the postoperative tenure is never much higher than two or three, which of course is far, far, far from a professional athlete. And this, of course, there is always this American uh, and the, their, their military academies have a lot of studies in this case that can be extrapolated to professional athletes. And they have split it because, as I said before, there are so many different scenarios in multi ligament injury that we cannot give one recommendation and one receipt for uh, the whole group. So they show that uh, if you have both cruciate ligaments, the chance of rest, uh, return to sport is only half percent. Uh, only 50% or around half of the patients. If we have PCL, posterior PCL ligament, with posterior lateral corner, the same, so PCL is very bad, and PCL and posterior lateral corner, uh, PCL with uh, PCL, uh, both cruciate with posterior lateral corner, also very bad. So when we have a PCL for football, it's really a bad situation. In some other sport, it can be difficult, but uh, with a grade three PCL, concomitantly with the other ligament, the results are very poor for professional athletes, specifically for football players. But conversely, when the combination is ACL with posterior lateral corner, the result is really good. So um, I, really, I really like to give you some good news. Uh, we are being invaded by bad news about coronavirus and dead people all around the world. I will only talk about the combination with ACL and posterior lateral corner because the idea of having uh, um, a play, a, 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 an athlete back to the field with PCL and some other ligaments are really, really low. Again, we have four ligaments here. We can have a combination of ACL and uh, MCL, ACL and posterior lateral corner, cruciate ligament, so on, so on. Both cruciate, 
again, we will not talk about this. We will talk specifically about the ACL and posterior lateral corner. Because if we have cruciate ligament for athletes, we, we should send them to the, to the psychologist rather than to the, to the field. As I said before, ACL plus MCL, in most of the cases, let's say 98 or 99% of the cases, we will treat it first conservatively for the MCL and around six to eight weeks, once the MCL is healed, which happened in most of the cases, we perform a standard ACL reconstruction. So we will not talk about this. Again, I will talk specifically about uh, ACL and posterior lateral corner, which are the only combination, the only multiligament combi uh, injury combination that provides some uh, satisfactory results. And for standing the posterior lateral corner, they are not a, a, a perfect uh, classification system. We have been doing different uh, expert consensus and worldwide uh, uh, surveys about this, and all agree of the basic high agreement that uh, a better uh, classification uh, system for the postulatal corner is needed. But uh, till we have done, uh, we, 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 we get there. Uh, the one I, I like to use is the Fanelli because not only consider the coronal plane, but also the uh, axial plane. It means the Houston classification, for example, only consider how much opening you have in the medial or lateral side, lateral side in this case, but this one also evaluates the rotational uh, stability. And it uh, splits the postural corner in three different issues, being the less uh, severe, the type A, which correspond to an isolated injury of the popliteofibular ligament, and we are sorry, here. And in this case, from a physical exam point of view, we will have no lateral opening, uh, doing various stress uh, maneuver, with a positive dial test at 30 degrees of deflection. So if we clinically observe that there is no virus opening, no lateral opening, with a positive dial test, this is not 100% of the cases because we can have also a, dial test, a positive dial test with uh, medial side injuries, but if we know that the lateral side is the one who, who, who suffered the issue, we can conclude that we have a phonetic type A, which again corresponds to the popliteal figure element. So, if we have only a popliteal fibular ligament injury, I will not treat with a laprad or even an arcero. I will only treat the, uh, 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 the, the injured structure, which I said, again, the popliteal fibular ligament. And the ZAN technique is the one I'd like to use with a double tunnel, conversion tunnel in the popliteal and the fibular head, and both uh, ends of the, of, the, of the graph, and then uh, are then fixed uh, at the popliteal tendon footprint in the uh, superior one-fifth of the popliteus sulcus. We are going to see here, you can perform it, you can do it this uh, with a standardization, I like to do it with three small incisions. In these cases, we are going above proximal to the uh, bicep tendon, so uh, I don't go for the, um, for the peroneal nerve. The peroneal nerve is protected by the um, biceps, uh, bicep tendon. And once you perform both tunnels in the, in the fibula, you perform uh, one tunnel, as I said before, in the popliteus tendon insertion, as we are observing here. So both uh, ends, for one for, uh, through each uh, tunnel, and from the posterior aspect of the fibular head, deep to the FCL, deep. Remember deep, it's not that easy, but you have to place it deep, and then you fix it in the corresponding area at 30 degrees of deflection with a slight internal uh, rotation. When we have, uh, a, the, from the physical point of view, uh, not only a di positive dial test, but also a mild or intermediate lateral opening uh, and those various stress uh, maneuver, we can, uh, we can conclude that there is not only initially to the popliteal fibular ligament, but also to the FCL. So this, we have a combination of this, but uh, still there is not a so severe injury to perform not only uh, this, this FCL apopitophilia ligament, but also a popliteus tendon uh, reconstruction. So in these cases, uh, I don't go 
for a finally for a uh, Laprade technique either. Uh, it used to be normal to perform a Larson technique, but it has been shown large, largely in biomechanical studies that uh, splitting the femoral insertion in two uh, protects and uh, restores the rotational stability better. The RCO techniques uh, show that uh, we have a one soft tissue graph where the anterior arm plays the role of the XCL and the posterior arm plays the role of the popliteal fibular ligaments, as I said before, in two times. I made a slight correction or let's say modification of the techniques because if you see here, the insertion of the, of the tunnel of the popliteal fibula, of the fibular head is too low. The insertion of the popliteal fibular ligament is right 1.6 millimeter distal to the tip of the steroid process of the fibular head. So it's much more proximal. So it, um, I'm not going here this position because also in this position, there's a higher risk of injury to, to the uh, peroneal nerve. I go much, uh, I exit the, the fibular tunnel much more proximally, as I said before, near the tip of the, of the fibular head. In these cases, the uh, peroneal nerve is protected. So again, you don't need to go specifically for this nerve in this uh, reconstruction technique. You are going to see here, again, you can do it with a standard open uh, uh, approach. First cases, it's better to do that. And then three small incisions, one in the anterior aspect of the fibular head. You place your uh, opposite uh, finger uh, to feel uh, when the uh, K-wire uh, goes out. Once you perform one tunnel, you identify uh, the insertion points. You have to perform this insertion. I, we performed a, a study published a few years ago in arthroscopy in which directions uh, you have to perform this tunnel. We can talk about this a little bit later in order to prevent collision with ACL concomitant tunnels. And I, as you are seeing here, we fix uh, both uh, ligaments. We can take, uh, I, can, I can explain later at which uh, degree of uh, knee flexion uh, each, uh, com each uh, reconstruction component. And then again, this is not the case. Uh, we are gonna explain uh, further in, uh, in athlete because if you have a type C, uh, this, um, uh, involves necessarily both cruciate ligaments. So as I said before, there is no expectations to restore any degree of function uh, of uh, basic functional sport activities for professional athletes. So in this case, there is a huge and gross virus opening, not only at 30, but also at zero degree of uh, knee flexion. In these cases, it has been proposed largely the, the Laprade technique, which is a very good uh, technique. It's pretty much anatomic. It's not fully anatomic, but it's pretty much anatomic. In this case, uh, in yellow, we are seeing the FCL. In, the, in, the, in, in, uh, uh, in blue, the popliteal fibular ligament, and in light blue, the, the popliteal tendon. But if you really think about it, uh, the popliteal fibular ligament is not a really a, a popliteal fibular ligament. It is, it is a, a tibiofibular ligament, which in reality, uh, in real situation, it doesn't exist. That's why I prefer in these cases of severe postulatic coronary issue to perform the Lee technique, which in fact was described one year before, but he's Lee, he's not Laprade, so uh, it's not that popular. Uh, and in these cases, they, uh, this is much, from my point of view, it's, it's a clever uh, solution because it not only, it, it doesn't only agree, it doesn't only, uh, it doesn't only address the FCL, but in this case, uh, it performs a reconstruction of the popliteal fibular ligament much more anatomically and also the popliteus tendon. The only thing also to criticize about the technique is the same to our zero, even worse, because the direction of the uh, fibular head uh, tunnel is the opposite way that uh, it should be. So uh, we should do it in, in, this, uh, in this direction. This is a video uh, of the RCL technique, the fast one. Of course, in this case, it's always you have to identify the phenomenal error, also because I'm indicating this in more severe cases where all the normal anatomy can be distort, distorted. Uh, you need to perform the uh, a tibial sling, the tibial tunnel. You can help you with the with a, uh, with the fluoroscopy. In this case, it was a there was a concomitant uh, fracture, so it was a, a KD five. Uh, easy one because with two uh, um, percutaneous extruder, uh, I could reduce it. And again, you perform all the tunnels. You, you already know this, this technique. There's nothing new about this. The two tunnels in the femoral side also. In these cases, I usually use um, 
and Achilles tendon. I split it in two, and both uh, bone plugs are fixed in the femoral, in both uh, in, in the femoral tunnels. You are seeing here with an internal forensic tube. Then you go first with the popliteus tendon uh, component, and you go through the through the tibia, and the, uh, from posterior to anterior, and you do the same for the FCL, which must be superficial to the previous uh, graft. You go through the the fibular head, you fix it there, in uh, applying valgus stress. There is not much uh, good sensation when you fix the fibular head, but it is what it is. And then you go with the remnant through the, through the tibia, and you can see how it uh, reduced when you pull from them, not only for the PCL, but also this function of uh, secondary uh, posterior restraint of the, of the tibia. Uh, and again, as I said before, in these cases, you, you should send your ex-athlete to meditation and to play uh, bowling and recommend them, recommend them to go into retirement. Uh, how do we uh, recommend rehabilitation for these cases? In type A, with, uh, with ZAN technique, with isolated posterior, uh, isolated popliteal fibular ligament, I, re I re rehabilitate them exactly the same as with an ACL. When I have the most commonly seen type B, in most, I, I can say that perhaps 60% of, 60 or even 70% of the cases are performed are 20% uh, um, La Prat and 10% uh, uh, of uh, of uh, Zan technique, but as the point of, it depends on the on the not in the in the numbers, but in the patient, in the degree of uh, injury. In these cases, the first four months I do the same that uh, I do with ACL, but I uh, add the uh, knee brace, which should be also protected regarding weight bearing. I don't like to weight bear much for the first six to to eight weeks, so around two months of non weight bearing of, uh, of what we call proprioceptive weight bearing, just putting the, the leg there, just very slight um, uh, support on, on the operating knee. And the progression is similar to the ACL reconstruction after four months. With the AC, isolated ACL, you can start before, but for uh, um, concomit for um, ACL plus postural corner, you should go, you should go slower. And after four months, you, you should start with basic, uh, then a specific uh, football skill, and finally you have to tune the final aspect of the rehabilitation. This is all re you really need for a good rehabilitation. Uh, of course, if you have a more sophisticated gym, it's a <laughs> somehow better, but with a good uh, provision of uh, elastic bands and inertia uh, um, uh, machine or device, it's more than enough. Uh, the inertial exercises is really, really, really recommendable for, uh, for, for uh, a sport athlete, for, uh, for putting your patient back to sport. It's much better than working in the, than even the isokinetic and of course the um, isometric uh, exercises. First of all, in the basic motor skill, you have to work with the inertial strength here of elastic bands with some obstacles, uh, as we are seeing here in close change and uh, uh, indoor, following also basic motor skill, always with pivoting, but very controlled pivoting uh, uh, maneuvers, uh, linear and rotating, but always in uh, close change. And then you go to a specific motor skills. Again, first of all, switching directions, but always first in a, a close change exercises. And the final, finally, of course, to incorporate the the chute, the, the kick uh, of the of the ball, which is a, a open um, open chain. And when do we have to allow them to return to play? Uh, there are many many different variables to consider. Uh, from all the variables, the least I really think of is timing. I think there are much better uh, uh, variables to, to to pay attention to. But if for an ACA we consider around eight months, just in, in, in average, with concomitant postural corner for return to sport, I usually add some few months and, to, and finally around 10 to 12 months of uh, return to play. But there are many, many, many different. I'm, gonna talk, I'm not going to talk much about this. 
uh, it, uh, it's being shown that it has been it's being shown that uh, uh, psychosocial fac uh, factors are highly influencing the return to play with different uh, with these different uh, aspects of the so uh, psycho psychosocial uh, um, factors. First of all, the cognition, which is called from the psychological point of view, a health locus of control, is how they perceive their, their skill to control the, the, the life events. So how, how they feel, how they are going. Of course, if, uh, if uh, the cognition is higher, they can, of course, uh, uh, provide better, better results. Then you've got the effect. So at the end, how is your mood? Uh, it has been shown that the pessimistic improve more, but never reach the same level than optimistic. Of course, as you are optimistic, you start with a higher level, uh, and you increase a little bit uh, less, but you are always more uh, prone to have good results compared to pessimistic. If you are thinking in behavior also, the adherence to rehabilitation programs, not the same how uh, if you have a good or bad behavior regarding uh, the adherence to rehabilitation programs, and of course the outcomes, uh, we really had to think that after ACL is around uh, 80%, after ACL and postural corner is around uh, is a, li a little bit uh, lower than that. And the reason not to return to the same level is pain, is instability, of course. This is something from our field, but in many cases, uh, one of the most important factors that uh, prevent the patient uh, being back to sport is the fear to re-injury, the shift of priorities also for fear to re-injury and also for individual personalities. So we also have to uh, send these patients that are doing the rehabilitation process to, to see these psychological factors. I consider many other factors like MRI, MRI aspect, uh, functional, uh, uh, functional testing like we are seeing here, single leg uh, hook test, uh, triple, alternative triple and different different testing that you can do it basically even in your uh, in your office you don't need much more than that and also the muscle strength we all know that uh, the single uh, uh, single squat test is very important to know how the uh, external rotator of the hip are doing here which is of course you will know that very important to prevent or decrease the rate the, the chance of uh, retail and also there are now different uh, uh, prompts like the ACL RSI, which not only consider the functional aspect of the knee, but also the psychological factors, which from my point of view, it must be uh, considered when we are uh, dealing with any patient, but even more with professional uh, athletes. This is what I usually do in my, in, in my cases, in my office. If you have isokinetic uh, machine of core evaluation, you can, that, that, that's, that's good. I always perform an MRI. Uh, functional tests, uh, ACL, uh, RSI PROM, etc. So my take home message in this case is that will be that uh, depends uh, uh, on the degree of injury, the idea of they can uh, re return to play at the same level or not, uh, and at some point there is some kind of unpredictability. At the end, uh, the secret of uh, happiness is uh, low expectation, so you have to explain, explain the patient very clearly about their injuries, and you know that professional athletes is, is a different world. Manolo Leyes also can, can explain about this. It's nothing to, to compare with standard patients. So you have to be clear, honest, sincere, not only with them, but also with their, their managers. So this was my talk, a short video also, that uh, I, uh, I invite you to, to follow here to, the, to this uh, Instagram account. Thank you. for a wonderful talk. Uh, I think we'll take some questions. Is there any question to Dr. Pablo? Yeah, Gilman. Yes. Question? Yes, yes, please go ahead. Um, Pablo Gilman. Yes. Are you yes. able to hear? Yeah, he yeah. is hearing you. Yeah, yeah. 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 So the um, this is a fear of re-injury. That is the main thing when you do a surgery after your surgery, you are getting a good rehab. After nine months of one year of your uh, rehab, a patient will have a fear of re-injury, psychosomatic problems. How to tackle those things? Do you do a brain mapping or something, or can you tell elaborate about those things? 
Well, I do not. I personally do not. But uh, again, we are depending. If we are talking about professional athletes, it's one world. If we are talking about normal patients, it's another world. In normal patients, uh, unfortunately, I would love to have some kind of uh, uh, psychotherapist uh, advice uh, in my in my office, uh, specialized in sport. That we don't. Uh, I, I'm eager to have one. I've been talking to some of them to do something like that, but there is a problem also that many patients don't consider, normal patients don't consider that this uh, uh, is worthy to, to spend money for this. Uh, here in Spain, people consider that if you go to the psychologist, uh, it's, a good, it's a good issue, but it's hard to make them understand the importance of this, not only in, uh, for the function of the knee, but also for the confidence, uh, for, for the patient to feel confident. When we are talking about professional athletes, again, depends, it depends on which level we are talking about. Usually in high uh, uh, level athletes, uh, usually they already have in their clubs uh, uh, a psychologist department with uh, many professionals taking care of this and you can work, you can work uh, con concomitantly con uh, with, with them and to fine tune, to tune uh, the, the, the expectations. Um, I think this is all, all we are, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a surgeon, I'm a mechanic, as I said before, but uh, I'm really interested in doing some kind of multi, uh, multidisciplinary uh, approach, not only, we always, uh, you know, are close-minded and uh, only seeing the knee and even the patient in, the, in our office, but there's something much more than our office for the patient, and mostly we are talking about professional athletes. So I don't have a concrete uh, answer to you, but I think it's, this is something that uh, in the, if we are uh, capable of uh, getting some kind of uh, professional advice in this, uh, in this regards, it's, it will be a huge uh, uh, improvement. We are doing some of these studies also in uh, patellofemoral pain syndromes. And this is another issue, but uh, in these cases, the, Kinesophobia, and, but there are a lot of different stuff that uh, uh, make us uh, to exclude uh, patients for surgery because we know that in those in some situations with a very bad uh, results of these uh, these scores, uh, the, the the surgical outcome will be also bad, not because of the surgical technique, but because the patient is not prepared. But we haven't done yet uh, this so seriously in the, in the ACL or the ligament uh, um, group. Any, any other questions? Dr. Antal, yes. Dr. Nicholas Antal, you had some question. Samir, you want to yeah, ask I'm something? Yeah. Yeah. So Pablo, like in your series, as you said, like ACL and PLC, uh, patients, 90% of them go back to the sports and they're having good results. So in complete ACL tear with the posterolateral corner chronic injury, what you prefer to do? What is your technique? Uh, chronic uh, PLC injury having uh, all the things like popliteal tendon, even popliteal fibular ligament, and lateral collateral ligament with ACL. With ACL. ACL, of course, the ACL. It, well, the ACL depends. I, of, of course, I, I reconstruct the ACL, and the, for the piece for the corner, as I said before, it depends on the degree of knee injury. Uh, usually, in professional athletes. When you have a, a postural corner injury, usually it's in an acute setting. It's, you have a chronic uh, injury because mostly the, the patients uh, with a chronic postural corner instability, even isolated chronic postural instability in high professional athletes, uh, they will complain of instability. So uh, I think the LAPRA technique, it depends, as I said, as I said before, uh, the degree of injury. If uh, in most of the cases, the arcero technique is, is more than enough, it hasn't been shown uh, in any clinical paper that the, the LAPRA technique provides superior results to the arcero technique. But again, it depends what we are comparing. If we are comparing apples to apples or apples to, to peers. I, I mean, uh, in most of the cases, I think with the postural corner, again, if, you, if I perform an arcero technique, I also perform it with a small incision, so the recovery is, is shorter. But uh, I'm not saying that my, the arcero technique is my preferred technique. It's my preferred technique for one specific degree of uh, knee injury, which of course it is the most uh, common uh, uh, degree, but it's not uh, the only one. Graph choice? Graph? For ACL? For ACL, in which cases? 
ACL with postural corner? Uh, around 80% of my cases, I perform gra uh, hamstring graft. 20% or 18% quadriceps tendon and 2% BTB. I don't like much BTB, perhaps in football players only, but in other sports, I never perform usually uh, BTB because of the patellar tendonitis uh, problem they can have. In football, it's different because uh, hamstrings are very important for, for football uh, players, but for basketball players, volleyball players, all the stuff, I perform um, hamstring graft with, uh, in all the cases, uh, uh, lateral extraarticular tenodesis. And for postulateral corner, usually I, I, prefer, I use uh, soft tissue allograft. What is your choice, Manuel? Please, what is your choice of the graph? Yeah, uh, when I do soccer players, I go for uh, BTV. Um, also, big players, handball players, basketball players, I do BTV. And uh, uh, if, if they have uh, a, a clear uh, positive uh, pivot shift, uh, I associate a lot of extra articular tenodesis to the BTV. If I, re I remove a little bit of the lateral meniscus, I also associate uh, a lateral tenodesis and also in some cases with a recurvatum or then I or revision cases. But I think that the, the more professional, uh, the, the higher level of the player, the more I go for a BTV plus extraarticular tenodesis. It, 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 is, it takes longer. It is a more difficult surgery to to rehabilitate. Uh, they complain more, uh, but at the end, they get a very stable knee. And uh, in the in the world of uh, professional soccer, at least uh, in Spain, uh, most of the players uh, have uh, already have their opinion. I mean, it's they talk about they talk about them. They they, they talk each other. And it is very difficult to to uh, convince them to do uh, anything but a BTB. You can convince them to add uh, an extra articular tenodesis and like that, but the, the BTB is quite reliable in the soccer world. So, and even in uh, basketball players, I, I, I recently review a, a paper from NBA team physicians, uh, the, the physicians that take care of the NBA. Uh, and 85% of them uh, uh, will do a BTB in, in their in their players. I mean, they are they are very big guys. And you need to have a very very thick, strong uh, graft. So, uh, in general population hamstrings. Uh, people that very very low demand, very low demand allograft, and uh, very high demand BTB. That's to summarize. Uh, Roshan, Roshan, Sanjay, in our Indian scenario, in, hello, go on, yeah, yeah, Samir, we can hear you, yeah, Roshan, Sanjay, all, all Indian surgeons, for us, what will be the choice of graft better for postulateral corner, because allografts, what they are taking, they are of, Mostly 8 mm, 7 mm, more than that graft they get. And we are getting hamstring or peroneus, even if we get, we get up to 6 mm. See, the first statement is beggars are not choosers. We don't have <laughs> other so we have no choice. But That's why whatever, we are asking you what should be the best in our hands. Whatever, like if you say, whatever, whatever graft is available, because I see many of the time when you see this patient, their hamstrings are very, very small. In fact, yeah. uh, some of the times is very difficult, and uh, the, what kind of uh, gracilis we get is absolutely very, very small. It's of no use. No use. It's of no use. I think we have to uh, choose your graph very rightly, and uh, you should decide on the fixation and uh, the type of reconstruction after once you take a good amount of graph. So, in because. this situation, I will prefer to take a cordyceps for ACL and the hamstrings for the postlateral corner. That's what, like uh, all studies, if you'll see, or uh, Laprade study or Lee study, everybody they have stated, like 7 mm panel they are making in the femur, as well as for the tibia. We won't get that much graph. 
Yeah, that's true. Uh, 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 Pablo, why, why we are discussing? Because we don't have the allocrafts available in India. There is a restriction as well as the uh, licenses issues yeah. or uh, availability of allograft. So in certain parts of Asia, the allograft is a problem. No, it's, it's okay. It's something, this is something that, again, I, I will, I will, we will speak with uh, Jorge Chala in a crossfire uh, in 10 days. Uh, but uh, basically, uh, I mean, of course, in South America, for example, they are not, uh, uh, they don't have available tissue graph. So they also have to rely on the autograph. You don't have to forget that you have two knees. So if yeah, uh, something yeah. one knee that you cannot be taken, you can take from the other one. And if, even, even for BTV, there are some papers that performing isolated ACL with BTV or with quadriceps tendon provides superior results in terms of uh, pain, of course, uh, and satisfaction of the patient comparing to using the same uh, side graft. So yeah. I'm, not, I'm not recommending that. But, uh, yeah, especially for PCL, they recommend opposite side quadriceps. If yeah. you want to reconstruct the PCL, the best is to take opposite side quadriceps so that the quadriceps is a natural uh, antagonist to the PCL. And yeah, I will, I will never recommend a, quite a BTV for PCL. It's really <laughs> troublesome because you getting the, the, the bone plugs through the tibial uh, tunnel is very complicated. So only for PCL, only with uh, one bone plug. So if there is no question now... Uh, Roshan, can... Roshan. Yes, yes, who is this? Uh, yes, which combination... Which combination does well? ACL plus PLC or PCL plus uh, MCL? And what are the complications? They have not talked about complications in their hand. They may be masters, but we are learning. Yeah. Pablo uh, and Manuel, we all know that you are a masters of knee. So what are the what are the kind of complications you see in your knee dislocation cases, especially in athletes, apart from stiffness? Uh, I don't know. Go, go ahead, go ahead, Manuel. Well, number one complication, stiffness. Uh, uh, number two complication, stiffness. <laughs> number three complication, stiffness. Now, uh, and also we have some uh, technical complications. Sometimes you can have a, a, a blowout of the tunnel. Uh, also, uh, you must have sometimes you can have problems also with the tunnels you can they can uh, 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 coalesce the tunnels if you if you are not careful enough uh, um, maybe fixation problems sometimes you don't have a good uh, fixation and you need to do to have double fixation at the tibia and uh, residual laxity uh, that's a common complication uh, usually posterior laxity or a lateral opening, a particularly difficult patient for us, a soccer player with a lateral instability, very difficult patient. All of them are severe barrows deformity, and it is very difficult to get good stability uh, with a barrow's knee. And uh, you cannot do uh, osteotomy, he will end his uh, sport uh, career. So those are the uh, very, very difficult situations, but of course we do have complications, and you have to be very careful. Uh, when I see, whenever I see uh, Pablo's presentation, I, I, I really admire it. It's a, a very skillful surgeon, but uh, uh, there is a risk uh, in doing uh, like mini open techniques. You have to really master the technique because. Uh, the lateral side is not that forgiving, and you can have very, very bad complications. If, if so, uh, as he already said, uh, you can only switch to mini open techniques whenever you are a master in open techniques, because it can be, it can get very, very bad if you if you miss uh, the position of your tunnel, or if you break the cortex, or, or even if you damage the nerve. So, but uh, the, it's a difficult. Uh, those are difficult surgeries. I think that uh, the best thing is to have uh, one or two surgeons per uh, hospital that can do this surgery. I don't think it's. Uh, they are so uncommon injuries that it is very difficult uh, to have a, a, a short learning curve. So it is better to to have one or two surgeons who are familiar with the area and the technique, and that will decrease the the complications. Um, yeah. How often, how often you'll do arthrolysis? How? Uh, in which cases? You, you mean in, 
atrophibus of the of the multi ligament injuries but again it depends in which cases because it's so dependable on so many variables it, it, the patient can go uh, proper rehabilitation I, I couldn't say a percentage. I, I don't believe in percentage in these cases because we can speak about percentages ACL because most of the cases are similar, but multiligament are so, so different. Uh, I used to have more, I, now a little bit more aggressive with the rehabilitation, not with weight, weight bearing. I'm very protective regarding weight bearing, but I'm allowing to start uh, uh, movement and ration, restoration motion uh, pretty much early, but not way very. But again, it's not something that I'm very worried about if we have a severe multiligament injury. If you have some degree of stiffness, it's not a, it's not a real issue for me. Pablo, don't, don't, don't you think that the dynamic brace has yeah. helped us a lot? Yeah, a lot. We are, we are more aggressive since we have the dynamic brace. Absolutely, the dynamic brace, because always we are uh, worried about the PCL healing. We all know that. The rest of the ligament, perhaps the MCL is not the best also, but the PCL is usually the one which uh, leads us to bad results. So the, the Medi PCL or the, or the jacket uh, PCL brace that are dynamic is much, much better. I, I use them for four to six months, 24-7 uh, since, days, since days two. Uh, I take the, uh, uh, um, the spleen after, two, after one or two days and they, I put them... Uh, under the PCL uh, dynamic brace, uh, and yeah, of course it, have, it has changed. It, it, it's uh, still sh uh, early to to see if uh, we have better results, but uh, our impression, I, I, I share your impression that uh, the results are much better than the, when we used to have uh, the standard uh, static uh, braces. Perhaps we also need to something like a dynamic for MCL uh, uh, healing and PCL also the uh, corner, perhaps. I think uh, uh, let's wrap up the meeting now because it's already 8.30. One, one, one question, question. question. Yeah, last question, question JP. Yeah, Pablo Gilbert. Hello. Yeah. So uh, in high demand patients, in high demand patients, uh, can we use uh, autograft with the allograft like uh, uh, tibialis anterior? Uh, uh, sorry, um, this one, allograft uh, for tender Achilles uh, with the autograft for high demand patients. Is there any biology change or is there any papers uh, having a better healing power of autograft command? One stand up for allograft. Yeah, Dr. Uh, can, can you say it again? Because I, I, I hear very, you know, we interrupt. I think he's asking if there is any problem combining allograft with autograft with, with regards to healing and if there is any immune response of doing a hybrid uh, graft combining allograft with autograft. Is that a question? Yes, yes, yes. I, 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 don't, I don't have a uh, scientific data from my side, but uh, it has been, I mean, there are many, many studies that have used a hybrid uh, construction with the allograft and autograft. Uh, in some cases, at the end, it's not, there's not much, much, much difference between the autograph and allograph because we are providing more than, uh, we are basically providing collagen fibers. So we are not providing any cells in the, in the case of allograph. Uh, there is uh, more, uh, in, in our tissue bank, the allograph are, uh, are storage in, uh, under freezing conditions, so frozen, fresh frozen basically. So you don't have any uh, immunogenic uh, response with this allograft. Uh, at the end, I prefer to have something if you are thinking on using autograph and at the end you don't, you don't provide enough uh, diameter, enough uh, size for, with the autograph, you can uh, mix it with the, with the allograft. But this is, I mean, it's not something based on, on science. I don't think it's uh, nothing about, about this in the literature regarding biological uh, healing, comparing allo, auto, and hybrid uh, construction. But I think from my point of view, from my me uh, mechanical point of view, I think it's a, it's, a, it's a valuable option. I don't know, Manuel, if you think so too. Yeah, I, I agree with you, Pablo. In, in fact, in some cases, we do it with, with ACL reconstruction. If we are doing a, a, a hamstring reconstruction and we are not happy, with the thickness of the tendon, uh, we add an allograft, and we we have done it for many many years without uh, any known problem. 
I don't think it's a it's a big issue. Agree. Hello. Thank you very much, everyone, for a wonderful meeting. For Pablo, Dr. Manuel, you have been a very good friend of Indian surgeons. You have been participated many, many of the seminars. I'd like to thank from the bottom of my heart on behalf of all the Indian surgeons who visited the Zoom as well as YouTube today. There are a lot of questions on YouTube. I'm very sure that you'll be followed much on Instagram. At least I will promise you to follow both of you on Instagram. <laughs> And we will share more and more knowledge. Thanks, thanks everyone. I like to. Yes, thanks, thanks, Ravlo. thanks, Manuel. Thank, Thank you for the invitation. Thank you for the invitation. Bye, bye. We'll, bye, bye. we'll, bye. we'll have more bye. and more such kind of meeting, Pablo. If you agree, Manuel, we'll keep next week. Probably we'll keep another meeting with you. Yeah, but you you, you have to come to Spain uh, to a, a soccer game. I will invite you to see y yes, how, yes. Real, how yes. Real Madrid beats Barcelona. Yeah, Real Madrid always beats Barcelona. Yeah, you have to come to the, you have to come to the Classico. Okay. Uh, we'll take care of you. Thank you, thank you, <laughs> thank you, thank you, both of you, Pablo, Manuel. Thanks, thanks everyone. I'll I'll end the meeting. Bye bye. bye, -bye.